oh, my guy's got five this morning, too. <laughs> so good morning. Welcome to our last Zoom class for this lockdown, anyway. And just take a moment to really ground into your sit bones. Notice, start to notice how you feel. And let's cup the knees with the palms down and come into Chin Mudra. And just start to move your spine and roll your trunk around the midline, almost like your spine is a spoon stirring in a pot. And make the movement quite large and just start to get back into your body. I don't know about you, but it's quite easy during these uncertain times to be in our head a lot and to really have to come back to the body time and time again. And then pause and go back in the other direction. And don't worry about too much what this looks like. Just feel into it. Be aware of your sit bones, maybe the weight on your feet. And imagine your spine is like a spoon stirring through thick soup. Maybe a good image of what sometimes the mind might feel like. And then start to slowly make that circle smaller and smaller and smaller until you come to stillness. Feel the weight through the sit bones and lengthen the spine as you breathe in from the core of the earth all the way up and out through your crown. And as you exhale, send your breath through your body and back into the earth. Then the next time you need to breathe in, feel, sense and imagine that you're breathing in through both nostrils. Flooding your brain with your breath. And as you exhale, send your breath through the physical and energetic spine into your body. Feel it moving down through the sit bones, through your legs, and out through your toes. Breathing in again through both nostrils. Flooding the brain. And then exhaling, sending your breath into your body. Let it flood through your body. And back into the earth. Do that two more times on your own. Letting go of this. And just notice how quickly you can come home. And if you wish to set an intention this morning or to dedicate this practice, bring your hands to your heart space. Ata Yoga New Shasanam. This is the first Yoga Sutra, which means. It is with great respect and infinite love for ourselves and all beings that we now come to this practice. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And gently leaning back onto the back of your sit bones and leave your left heel into your groin and bring the right leg around to the side in that animal resting pose. And you might need to adjust your cushion or your prop and have your cushion underneath the left side of your sit bone and pelvis so that you're more level. And remember, if you find this uncomfortable, go higher. So even if you had to sit up on the couch or put another blanket underneath your hip. And then let's come into the circle of joy from here. As you inhale, interlace your fingers and draw those elbows high. Exhale, round through your spine. Soften your chin to your chest. Take your time, maybe stay here for an extra breath and really breathe into that space between your shoulder blades. 
And let your shoulders soften away from your ears. And then the next time you inhale, take your hands skyward, releasing your hands around your body as you breathe out. Slump a little. Have the elbows soft as you open the front of the body. And then drawing the arm bones back, move your elbows towards straight. Let's mix it up a little today and bring your left shoulder up towards your ear, ear to your shoulder. And then slowly release, chin to chest. Bring the chin back up. Take the right shoulder. So you might need to bend your elbows to do that. Right shoulder to right ear. And then release the shoulder and bring your chin to your chest. Stay here now with chin to chest. And if you'd like to come forward, come forward, lifting your hands behind you. Then slowly roll back up. Releasing your hands, just let them float all the way back to your heart space. And as you breathe in, begin to turn to your left and just notice how far do you turn, bringing both fingertips to the floor or your cushion on the floor. And just notice, did you even lift that right sit bone? Did it come with you? And if not, encourage it to come with you. And then just to get your right hand out of the way, bring that right hand and place it up onto the left shoulder. And now keep your trunk turned to the left and look back towards the right. And just start to find a trajectory for your chin as you turn your head from side to side that is comfortable for your neck. So sometimes softening the chin a little to the chest is more comfortable. Sometimes parallel with the floor is more comfortable. And just start to really wake up the muscles of your neck and upper trunk. And then the next time you turn and look back to the left, Fix your eyes on something, keep your head where it is and let your sit bones sink down and your chest come back to centre. Keep your eyes fixed on that space as you turn back towards it and just flow now a few times, keeping the head still, rotating your trunk. And really notice how you're lifting that right sit bone, inner thigh of the right leg presses down. And then the next time you turn your body to the left, look back to the sit bone that's lifted or to the right, and then put it both together. Sink your sit bone, look away from it. Lift your sit bone, look towards it. Sink your sit bone, look back to the left. Lift and turn, look to the right. And then just let it flow. Don't, it doesn't need to be a big movement. Really great movement to loosen up your lower neck and upper thoracic, moving them in opposite directions. And then the next time you turn yourself to the left, let your head come and just notice how far you can turn now. It's like that party trick, I always can go much further. And then take your cushion out of the way and you're going to come down onto your side and come onto your elbow. So stack your knees and have your elbow slightly forward of your shoulder and then press down through your elbow and lift the right hand to the ceiling. Then imagine you're putting that right hand into a sling, roll your ribs like a barrel to the floor and touch down behind you. And then off you go. Now feel free to lower at any time and then come back up or stay lifted the whole time and really work on rotating your ribs so put that arm in the sling rotate your ribs and then touch down onto the floor one more time and then lower your pelvis down and come all the way down onto your side and as you come onto your side just have your knees a comfortable position. They don't need to be at a right angle or anything. And we're going to come into an arm slide. So remember in your arm slide, it is your ribs that are rolling like a barrel and dragging your arm across your body. And then you turn your chest back to the floor and you slide your hand past your bottom hand. And just notice, what do you need? If you've had a really busy week or a full week and you've been in your head a lot, Sometimes you need to meet yourself and you might need to move a little quicker. Or if you've slowed down and you're enjoying a slow pace, 
Let you take yourself to your favorite beach where you've got all the time in the world. And let the movement be slow. And the next time your hands come together, pause on your side. Bend up that bottom knee to a right angle at your hip and then straighten your top leg. We're coming into propeller. So depending on what your top shoulder is like, your right shoulder, you might reach your arm out up closer to your head and then take your arm over your body as you allow the center of the body to move you. And then you turn your ribs back to the floor. And keep turning so that you can lengthen through your side without arching your back. If your shoulder needs a little more support, remember you can keep going with the arm slot across the body. And enjoy your propeller. I've got no room for propeller. <laughs> it's just me and the hydraulics. <laughs> Remember when you come into the twist, you might feel like you'd like to just hold that and not keep flowing. So again, honor that. And if you need to come back to that brain breathing at any time where you breathe in and flood your brain as you breathe in through both nostrils and then send it through your body, please do. So your choice, holding or flowing. And then the next time you need to exhale, if you're holding, let's all meet back on the side. And then press down through your, your top hand and come all the way back up into that animal resting pose. And then just grab your cushion. Keep it underneath the left side. And let's come into some more side bends. So grounding through the left fingertips, take the right hand up and over and enjoy that length from the bottom knee all the way to your fingertips. And then roll the shoulder forward and now your trunk is facing this left thigh and start to creep your fingers forward and maybe come down laying your trunk on your thigh. Now you decide if you wanna hold, hold and come back to that brain breathing. Or if you'd like to flow, you roll up one vertebrae at a time, bring your fingertips behind and open through the front of your hips as you press your shins down and forward and lift your pelvis. And then lay yourself back down or buttocks back down and come forward. So you decide, hold or flow. And the next time you bring your pelvis back to the cushion, if you're flowing, pause. If you're forward, roll yourself up. And then bring the right fingertips to the floor and come over into a side bend to the right. Then you'll roll the left shoulder to line yourself up with your thigh and come forward and we're gonna hold here. And so really feel if you could press that left hip bone down into the floor a little more coming forward to find your edge over the right leg. You might pause in your elbows, maybe you're going deeper. And just have a little nod here, let your head go, particularly if your week's been busy or full, different way to describe it, isn't it? And then slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Roll your shoulders as you get to the top. You know, lean back, so you might like to come off your cushion and just bring your legs both out in front and come into Navasana, squeezing the inner blades of your feet together as you take your arms wide. And then reverse your side. So bring the, the right heel in and bring the left heel around to the side. Take your cushion and place it or your blanket underneath your right side. Bring your hands back to your heart space, circle of joy, a little different. Inhale, interlace, 
press your chin down onto your fingers as you lift your elbows really high. Then as you exhale, take your hands straight down just in front of the front foot. Hold here, breathing into that space between your shoulder blades. Then scoop your hands forward towards the top of your mat. Take them skyward. Let's side bend. So to the left, or whichever way you've gone first. Back to center, to the other side. Know that you're about to feel balanced, but just come back and notice this right side after a propeller. Feel into the left side. And then release the hands around, slump, elbows bent, shoulders come forward, and then lengthen the front, roll the heads of your arm bones back, and then move your elbows towards straight. Stay here or chin to chest or come forward and lift the hand sky. We do notice in animal resting pose, you may not go as far forward. And slowly rolling up. Releasing your hands, let them float back to your heart space as you bring your focus back. And then we gently turn towards your right. And again, just notice when you turn, does your hip come with you? Does your pelvis come with you? And if not, it's just showing up that, that, that you've lost that connection through or there might be tightness or whatever reason really. But then lift the sit bone and notice how that helps you to turn a little more. Take your left hand and place it up onto your chest just to get it out of the way. And then keeping your trunk where it is, start to look back over the opposite shoulder. And you wanna play here finding the right angle of your chin to make this comfortable. So it might be chin to your chest or it might be chin parallel. Just notice how your neck's feeling. And then come back to look to the right. Keep your eyes fixed on something now and let the sit bone sink down and the trunk come back to center without bringing the head. And then lift the sit bone and turn. Head stay still. Sink your sit bone, chest comes back. Lift your sit bone, trunk turns. Sink the sit bone, trunk comes back. Lift the sit bone, trunk turns. One more time. Sink your sit bone, lift and turn. So now in this turned position with your trunk, look back towards the left shoulder. And then sink your sit bone, trunk comes back and you turn your head to the right. Lift your sit bone, look towards it. Sink your sit bone, look away. Lift your sit bone, as you look towards it, just be mindful you're not dipping your ear so you don't need to look so far. And then sink your sit bone, look back to the right. Off you go and you'll notice, as I do, you may notice that one side may be a little trickier than the other. So if this is your tricky side, or the side that's less connected neurally, then go a little slower and make the range of movement less. If there's any discomfort in your neck, don't look so far back. So rather than looking to your sit bone, just look to the top of your mat as you turn your trunk. A couple more times. So I notice on this side, there's stiffness in my lower neck on the left. And so what, wants, what my brain wants to do is dip my ear down to my shoulder as I turn. So just look to the top of the mat if that's happening to you. Next time you turn your trunk, let your head come with you and notice, woohoo, hopefully you're going a little further. And then take that cushion out of the way and come down onto your elbow. Knees are together. And you've got about a 45 degree angle. So you're not too close high up with your knees. And then pressing down through your forearm, lifting your hand to the ceiling. Then put that arm into a sling. So you roll your ribs and then touch down. And off you go. Enjoy this opening through your thoracic spine, your mid back. We 
Remember, you can lower your pelvis and come back up, or you might be able to hold the whole time. And then we'll slowly lower down, bring your arm out. Get a bit angle for me. Arm out into that T. And turn your chest to the floor and slide your hand past your bottom hand. And then let your ribs be like a barrel of your favorite drink. And let your ribs roll open. And let that drag your arm with it. Try and keep your knees together. So you're only moving as far as you can keep the knees together. And just notice, do you need to go fast? Do you need to move slow? Okay, and the next time you turn your chest back to the floor and your hands come together, stay there and bend up that bottom knee a little more and straighten the top leg. So you're going to turn your chest to the floor. You can keep your hand where it was at that shoulder height or if it's okay, you go higher. So it's like your arm and leg are the uh, blades of the, or the, of the hel helicopter or the propeller or the fan or clock arms, and then move from your center. Allowing your ribs to draw your arm over your body. Allowing your ribs to turn and your waist to bring your chest forward and take your leg back. So just be mindful you're not arching your back. You can always shorten the lever of your arm and leg if there's any pressure in your back. And again, if you come into the twist and you think, oh, I just want to stay there, then feel free and breathe into that. Or keep flowing. When you're ready, you turn your chest back to the floor and press down through your arms to come up again. Coming back into animal resting pose the same way. And then side bending over to the right and just noticing now how that feels on the left. Enjoy. And then roll your shoulder forward so your trunk lines up with this right leg and lay your body forward. Your choice, you can stay still or you can roll up, fingertips behind, lift the pelvis open through the hips and chest and then release the pelvis back down and roll yourself forward. Trying to keep that left sit bone grounded. And again, you might notice it's really, it can be different, quite different from side to side. So adjust your practice accordingly. Yogi's choice always. And the next time you come back upright, pause in the center. And then bring your left fingertips to the floor and come on over to the left side bending. And then we'll roll the shoulder forward, lining up with the left leg and come forward. And of course, this is very different. So you might like to just hold and breathe into that resistance. Or if it feels better for you to flow, you can go straight back to how we were flowing previously, but coming forward to the left. Sending your breath into that resistance. And 
and slowly roll yourself up. Pause for a moment, maybe close or soften the eyes. And just notice the power of asana, of yoga, to bring you home so quickly and frequently, time and time again. Now, if your knees are happy for you to roll forward from here onto your hands and knees, then do so. But remember, if not, you might bring your knees together first. And let's come into downward dog. So ground the whole rim of your hands. So if pause on your knees for a moment, really press down the base of the thumb, index, and little finger, inner and outer aspect of that wrist. And then keep your knees really bent this morning for this first down dog and lengthen the whole of your spine. Let your head go. Have that little nod. And then once you feel you've got the length in your spine, rise to the balls of your feet, press one heel towards the floor, let the other knee bend. And off you go, walking out through your legs, particularly after sitting in that animal resting pose for a while. And then pause, walk your feet together, tuck your uh, right heel in towards your buttocks and then bend that left knee. You might even need to shorten your stance here and raise up onto your heel and lower. So your knee stays bent. Get my right leg out of the way. Knee is bent the whole time. So you're working your deep calf muscle. And then pause and pulse the sole of the right foot to the ceiling. If anyone finds it's too strong being down dog, you can walk your fingers back and be more in a forward bend. So your choice. And then release the right foot to the floor and take the left foot and get it out of the way. So bend that right knee now and you rise up onto the ball of the foot and then sink the heel. Keeping the knee bent the whole time. See if you can keep the length in your spine. As you rise up onto the ball of your foot, really press those two front car tires into the floor. And then lower the heel directly down. So your knee is tracking over your toes. And then pause again. Heel could be lifted or lowered. And pulse the right sole of the foot to the ceiling. Keep the length in your spine or walk your hands back towards your foot. And then lower your feet. Pause for a moment in your downward dog, keeping your knees slightly bent here to really get the length in your spine. Soften your chest towards the floor. And then start to walk your feet forward. You might need to come up onto your fingertips. Walk your feet forward. So you're framing your feet with your hands and surrender into your first forward bend. Let there be no tension in your neck. So have a little yes, have a little no. Maybe keep moving those knees and feet. Lifting your heels and lowering them. It's really waking up your joints, particularly in the morning. And then hold on to your inner elbows, maybe even circle your wrists if you need to after holding down dog. And then let's go down to come up, tuck your tail and slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Roll your shoulders at the top and then scoop your hands around you. Let your palms touch and roll straight down through the center. Really enjoy hanging like a rag doll, just noticing that your knees are not rolling in, you're keeping those four car tires grounded equally and evenly. And then bend your knees. And like a rag doll, slowly roll up. Draw your arms around you at the top and then turn to look towards the right little toe and roll, <coughs> excuse me, roll down through the right. And then hang in the middle, 
So you come up through the middle. So roll up through the center. Draw your arms around you. Palms touch, you might look up. And then turn towards the left leg, sliding your hands down the outside of the left leg. Then hang in the middle and slowly roll up. Drawing your arms around you. Staying upright this time as you bring your hands to your heart. Surya Namaskar, salute to the sun. And how nice for those who are outside, you can see the sun is rising behind the clouds. So if you're not at the top of your mat, come to the top of your mat. Take a breath in and draw your arms around you. Then exhale and roll through the midline. Find your flat back now, soft knees, lifting the front of the ribs, back of the head. Step that right foot back and lower the knee. And then feel like you're dragging the right knee forward as you come up into your low lunge. Really tuck the pelvis under. Then bring your hands to your heart. Separate your palms so middle fingers touch and rotate towards the front leg to the left. Bring the palms back together. And then bring the elbow to the outside of that thigh and press the elbow into the thigh. Stay here or straighten your arms. Fingertips to the floor, hand to the ceiling, or you can even roll it behind you and work on opening the top shoulder. Stay here or lift the back leg. Then lower the knee back down, frame the front foot, step back to your plank and lower to the floor as one. Inhale into a sphinx, having your belly off the floor, glutes contracted. And then gently turn and look towards one heel, let your ribs come with you. Come back to center and turn the other way. Back to center, release to the floor. Inhale to your hands and knees or plank, downward dog or child. Then we'll take that right leg up and long, curl into a tight ball and step the right foot lightly between your hands, lowering that back knee. Feel like you're dragging the back knee forward as you come on up, taking your hands skyward. Bring your palms together, middle fingers touch, and then you rotate towards your front leg to your right. Stay here, bring your palms together. So they're all just versions. Bring the elbow to the outside of the thigh and really work on pressing the leg into the arm. So you might stay here, or you might straighten the arms from here, or bring the hand back, top hand behind you. Stay here or lift the back knee. Then bring your back hand forward, frame your front foot, retract, come forward to find your flat back and then release into your forward bend. Go down to come up, slowly rolling up, drawing your arms around you, bring your hands to your heart space. Bend your knees as you take your arms wide, look up. Roll through the center of swan dive. Find your flat back, soft knees, lifting front of ribs, back of head. Left foot steps back. High lunge, bending that back knee, tucking your pelvis under. Come on up. Once again, hands to heart, middle fingers touch. Rotate towards your front leg. So we're gonna play with some rotated balances this morning. So you might need your block. So if your block is handy, you can place your block on the outside of the right foot. And from here, rotate it to the right, bring your left hand down onto the block. Shift your weight. So your right hand can just come to the floor and you could stay here or you start to take the right hand and bring it to your pelvis. You need to roll the back hip down to the floor. 
and maybe you lift the back hand to the ceiling. Then frame your front foot. Step back to plank. Hold your plank. Start to shift your weight around through your hands, through your feet, circling, just like we were at the beginning of class. Stirring the pot and then go the other way. Pause in stillness and release to the floor as well. Sphinx or Cobra, your choice. Squeezing through your glutes, looking forward as you draw your hands back and then release. Inhale to your hands and knees or plank. Downward facing dog. Enjoy stillness in down dog, pressing the whole rim of your hands into the mat, making sure that the inner and outer blade of that wrist press evenly, let the elbows be soft. Bend your knees generously if you need to, to find the length in your spine. Or if you're starting to press your heels to the floor, see if you can really press the four car tires evenly, even if the heels don't touch, angle them, like you're gonna press them down evenly. And then walk your feet together, left leg up and long, curl into a tight ball, step it lightly between your hands. Locks on the outside of your toe for the balance, tuck your back, Back knees bent so you can tuck your tailbone and then come on up. Really strong through both glutes. Fingertips touch. Rotate towards your front leg. And notice how your back pelvis rolls towards the, the left as well. Let that happen. And then find your block and you want it slightly forward of your foot and to the outside of the little toe. Fingertips, or I actually prefer the floor, I think. So totally up to you whether you use your block or not. Then lift up through your back leg. Have your back hip, knee and toes facing the ceiling. Both hands can stay on the floor or start to roll the back pelvis towards the midline. And then maybe you take your hands skyward. Then turn your chest back to the floor, frame your front foot, step that back foot forward. You're in your flat back, release into your forward bend. Stay here for a breath or two, have a little nod, start to move your knees towards straight once you get your belly and your thighs in contact. And then go down to come up, tucking your tail and slowly rolling up. Draw your arms around you. Hands come to your heart space. Stand for a moment in Tadasana. And then bring your feet and knees together, which Katasana with feet and knees together. And sink on down into Utkatasana. So remember, you're really drawing in through your lower ribs. Your bum bones are reaching towards the chair that's not quite there. Hands at your heart this morning, because I want you to lift up onto your heels. So remember, you could have a block, definitely for your cat. If it feels better, have that block between your thighs and squeeze in on the block or squeeze your knees and thighs together. And then start to do a few rising up and lowering down, keeping the knees bent. trick is can you do this without gripping your toes so pressing down through the base of the toes and then settle your heels and stay maybe extending your arms out wide really drawing in through the lower belly soft eyes soft skin Utkatasana. you're finding the stability and the strength through your lower body and that soft open heart space at the front, but also at the back. And then bring your thumbs together, let them touch your third eye and dip yourself forward. 
separate your feet now as you come into your flat back and take your right foot back bring the heel down so you have a heel to instep alignment we're coming to trikonasana so slightly shorter stance and then press down through your feet and come up so you place that back foot there just to start because now what really is important that your front hip knee and ankle line up so if your pelvis is turned too far to the front you'll notice that the knee can be rolled in so turn the hip knee and ankle in alignment so that might mean that back foot comes full out to the side even more and then press the ball of the foot down as you keep your knee straight if you need to bend your knee please do bring your hand to where it falls and really think about what we've been doing thus far today really working on the side body so lengthen through that bottom underside by taking your left sit bone back right sit bone back I should say and then take your hands forward no I'm not mirroring you it's your left sit bone back and then take your hands forward you can look ahead or you might need to look down at the front foot see if you can have length on both sides of your trunk the under waist as well as the top so keep drawing that left sit bone back towards the back of your mat Then take your arm into extended trikonasana. Let your breath be easeful. So you might need to bend your front knee slightly or keep pressing the ball of the foot down. And then release your fingertips to the floor by pivoting and lifting the back heel. You're in a high lunge. So we're going to come into that side plank. I'll have to flip around so we can see. So from here, pivot onto the outside of the right foot and step your left foot off your mat in line with your knee, your back knee roughly, so that you've got this right angle. And here you are up in a high side bend. And then lower yourself down to the floor. Now you might lower to the floor and go, yep, that's me, I'm staying here. And then if you prefer, you're going to press back down through your foot and your leg and come up and then lower. So you want this left knee to be in a right angle. So you might need to adjust where your foot is. The trick is to take it further off your mat and then lower yourself down. Hopefully you can work this one out. Rosie, everyone else has done this one in a live setting. Couple more times. And then the next time you lift up, hold, you pivot on both feet and walk yourself back into down dog. So you can choose this morning whether you come forward, lower yourself to the floor and come into a sphinx. Or we're going to flow from up dog, from down dog rather to up dog. And if you're flowing, start to press back through your feet as you come forward. Really strong through your glutes, rolling over your toes. Shoulders are behind your wrists. You draw your wrists back and you look forward or up. Then to go back, draw your legs forward as you roll over your feet. Stay in down dog or do that two more times, your choice. So as you go forward, you press back through your feet, squeeze through your glutes, check that your shoulders are behind your wrists, draw your hands back, look forward. And then pause in downward dog and lower your knees and everyone sink to child. Or stay in down dog if it's better for your knees. And as you settle into child, notice you need a side bend, but you just need to be still and breathe from the earth again. 
Bring the breath to your navel and let it spread into every single cell in your body. And as you breathe out, send your breath back into the earth. And then slowly begin to roll up onto your hands and knees. And walk your knees back because you want your pelvis to be directly over your knees or your hips to be directly over your knees. So walk your knees back and then come up onto your fingertips and start to walk your hands forward as you sink your chest towards the floor. Now this is strong in your shoulders. So if it's too strong for your shoulders, bring your hands back a little and even just come to resting onto your forearms, sinking your chest down. But watch that you're not taking your buttocks back. So it's not like a child where your buttocks is back, but rather your hips are above your knees. And maybe you soften your chest to the floor, maybe even your forehead. Deeper version is fingertips. So forearms a little gentler. And you are sort of letting your back arch here, but you don't want to hinge on any particular area. So you might need to keep drawing your ribs up, the front of the ribs up. And then walk your hands back so that you can come into downward facing dog. Have a generous bend in your knees and really get the length in your spine, but the elbows soften. Let the shoulder blades wrap around like your armpits are trying to face one another. And then maybe move your knees towards straight. Breathing from the earth. Sending your breath deeply back into the earth. And then walk your feet together. Right leg up and long. Curl into that tight ball and step it lightly between your hands. Setting up for Trikonasana on the other side. Press down through both feet and come on up. So remember Trikonasana, often you want a slightly shorter stance. And you look at your front leg and you want your hip, knee and ankle to line up. So you might need to really step the back foot forward and so that the hip or the pelvis lines up at the diagonal edge of your mat. Then press the ball of the front foot down, knee is straight or bent if you need to. Tip your pelvis like you're a little teapot over that front thigh lengthening through both ways. So I sometimes like to even feel my ribs and really get the length through the ribs, then put the hand down. Yield your hand onto your thigh or shin, let the shin or the thigh press back. Roll the top shoulder open, maybe take your hand skyward. So the whole time you're trying to draw your right sit bone back so that notice how open your top side is. See if you can open your bottom side just as much. So in other words, if you reach too far down, you'll notice that you're curving your underside. Come up and go for length. Looking forward or down to your front foot. Enjoy your trikonasana, sending your breath through your body, five lines from your pelvis down each leg. Press the ball of the front foot down. From your pelvis to your crown, that's when you need to draw that right sit bone back from your heart space to your bottom hand and top hand. And then extend your arm over your ear, extended trikonasana. Keep pressing the ball of the front foot down. And then we'll pivot on the back foot so you can frame your front foot with your hands. Retract, come forward, find your flat back, and then melt into your forward bend. Bend your knees, go down to come up. Slowly rolling up, draw your arms around you, hands to your heart space. Inhale, draw the arms around you. Maybe a gentle back bend this time, looking up to your thumbs or looking ahead. 
swan dive or roll through the center. Find your flat back, soft knees, front of ribs, back of head lift. Left foot goes back, plant the back heel for a heel to instep alignment. Bring your block in if you've still got it on this end of the, or near your mat, because you might need it in a moment. And then press down through your feet and come on up into Earth Warrior. So front knee is tracking over your middle two toes. Remember if that knee rolls in, it's about your back hip. So you need to bring it forward. You look to your future. Yeah, you love classes. <laughs> you acknowledge your past, but you stay really present in the now. Maybe go a little deeper by caterpillaring, caterpillaring the front foot, creeping it forward. Press that front heel down and forward. And then turn the palm, front palm skyward. Vira Chandrasana. Taking the hand skyward, backhand to your thigh. Meet your backhand with your thigh. Match. You can look skyward or you can look ahead. Just check that that front knee is still tracking over the middle two toes. Good work. And then start to come over to Pasvakanasana. So forearm on the thigh, hand to vertical, extending the arm over the ear, all versions. Stay here or fingertips to the floor or your block. If you'd like to come hand to the floor. This can be really good if you want to control your knee position. It has that might work. To have the block. Or if anyone wants to go into Badahasta, you come forward, take that right hand underneath your leg, meet your left hand, and then see if you can lift yourself back up. You might need to shorten your stance to do Badahasta, so notice what you need. If you're in that bound, angled pose, release. And bring your block to the outside of your little toe if you like to use it, or just bring your fingertips to the outside of that little toe and come on up, lifting your back leg in the same position. So it's like you're trying to take your outer ankle, bone and hold the roof up and then take your hands skyward. You can look to the floor or maybe you turn and look to the left. Let your breath flow. Adha Chandrasana. And then we'll release the fingertips to the floor, release the back toes. Step back. Hmm, we need to do the other side. And this is the perfect time to do that other side. So let me just flip around for you. So you're going to roll onto the outside of that back foot and take your other which is your right leg, take it all the way off your mat. And then lower yourself down and you can stay here and just enjoy. You could even rest down onto your elbow and enjoy the stretch. Or flow, come on up, taking your arm over your head, releasing your pelvis down. Great release through the waist, through the hip. Stay there if you prefer or flow. So make sure that when you press down through your right leg, you end up with your knee in a right ankle. So you might need to scooch your foot forward even more off your mat, off the side of the mat. And the next time you come up, you pivot on your back foot, step the right one back towards it and you're in downward facing dog. And lower the knees, you choose. You might like to just come into child. Otherwise, we're gonna come into Dhanurasana on the floor. So come back into a plank, if you're coming with me, and come all the way to the floor. First version of Dhanurasana. Lift up onto your elbows, draw your elbows back towards you, and bend both knees. Press down through the front of the knees and feel the front of the hips contract and then let that go. And maybe lift 
your knees off the floor from here. So you could stay here in this active version or release. Take your hands and hold on to the fronts of your feet. And again, press the tops of your knees down first and feel how the front of the hips lift and contract. Now let the front of the hips go, melt the front of the pelvis into the floor, use your blanket if you need, and then you can come on up. Now, if you breathe into your chest, you'll stay still, or maybe you keep breathing in with your diaphragm and you'll rock. And when you need to come out of it, release. Turn your head to one side, have a moment of melt. Feel free to come back up into Dhanurasana. Or head to the floor. Try and draw the knees in towards the midline. Remember you lift your feet up and back and that's what lifts the chest. You're looking ahead or maybe you look forward without putting pressure on the base of the skull. And then you'll slowly release, turn your head to the opposite side. Maybe rock your pelvis gently from side to side. And then come back to center. And inhale to your hands and knees. Now you haven't got anyone there to give you an adjustment in child. So let's activate through the glutes before you sink into child. So you can do it from your hands and knees and just pulse. Or you might like to come up into dolphin. And maybe pulse 10 times through the first leg. 10 times through the second. And then release your knees. Release yourself into child. Remember if child's not right for you, you could always roll onto your back and bring your knees to your chest. And wherever you are, come back to your breath. Breathing from the earth. Bring your breath to your navel center and let it spread into every single cell. And then as you exhale, feel that you bring your breath back to your navel and you send it like an anchor or a root deep into the earth. And when you're ready, you're going to begin to slowly roll up at the back of the mat. Roll your shoulders when you get to the top. And just step your left foot forward and bend that left knee so it's tracking over your middle two toes. And position your back hip and foot so that your knee is tracking directly over your middle two toes. Then bring your hands to shoulder height. So you look to your future. You acknowledge your past. But you stay really present in the now. If you need to go deeper, just caterpillar the front foot forward. Sink a little more so that your knee ends up stacking over your ankle. And keep pressing the front heel down and forward. And that will help to bring the weight into your back leg because you don't want to collapse into that back leg really active through your back glutes. And keep that strength in your legs as you turn the front palm skyward, Virachandrasana. Bend your back elbow so you really match. Your thigh pushes into your hand, hand into your thigh. Keep the bend in the front knee. You can bend the elbow, even massage the base of your skull. We'll keep the arm extended, really active through both legs. 
Remember, if your knees, front knee is rolling in, might be better cast to just keep your hand on the outside. <laughs> and then slowly make your way to Paz Vakanasana. Lots of choices, forearm on thigh, back hand wraps behind, rolling the shoulder open. You could stay here. You could take the hand to vertical. Stay here. You could extend the arm over the ear. So you're really active. So you're pressing your front heel down and forward, extending through your fingertips all the way to your back heel. If you're coming deeper, come fingertips to the floor, block or butter hasta. Your choice. Then turn towards the floor. You're going to find your block if you like your block and bring it in front of the foot or come onto the fingertips and start to lift your back leg up. It's like you're trying to hold the ceiling up with your heel. And then you take your hands skyward and maybe you turn and look to the right. Cheating because the cupboard is helping me. <laughs> or you keep looking to the floor. Quite fun to do it against a wall sometimes. Let your breath flow. And then you turn yourself back to the floor, release the back toes, retract, come forward. Last Uttanasana, so enjoy. Forward bend. Maybe start to move your knees towards straight. And then go down to come up. Roll yourself up. Draw your arms around you. Bring your hands to your heart. And release. Standing in Siddhasana. Eyes closed or soft. Feeling the effects of this glorious practice of yoga that brings you home. Feel the groundedness in your feet. Breathe from the earth. Soft through the knees. Feel the length through your spine. The softness in your shoulders and your hands. The openness of the chest, front and back. This is Tadasana, the standing mountain. And this morning we're going to come into pigeon. So I'd like you to have a prop under your pelvis unless you really are pancaking to the floor. But remember, if we pancake to the floor, often we're just hinging on the joints of the hip and the ligaments. So if you have a blanket or your cushion, if you're using the blanket, roll it to make a little bit of a cylinder. And then let's go right leg first so it means the blanket is about a third of the way down your mat on a diagonal right side higher then plant your hands and come into down dog and then walk those feet together and take the right leg up and long now let's pause here and bend the knee and really open through the hip so make sure that your left knee is still pointing directly forward as you look towards it. So don't roll the left hip open, rather the right. If anyone wanted to play a wild thing, this would be a chance. You would just come forward, flip yourself over, open through your chest, and then come back up. Make sure the left knee is pointing forward, open the hip, and then square the right hip to the floor. Curl yourself into that ball and bring the shin over the blanket. So the knee comes to the outside of the right hand. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, press back. So opening through the left hip now. And then settle your pelvis onto your blanket. So this is the pigeon pose. So it's like you're settling into a nest. 
And then take your time. You might even close your eyes. You've never been here before. No matter how many times you've been in this pose. And slowly come forward. Find your first edge, which often is quite high. And breathe into that. So your knee must be happy. If it's not, I can't see Kath, but you know you can do threading the needle. And keep pressing your outer ankle bone into the floor to keep a little bit of activity in the muscles of the hip the whole time if you can. And if the edge widens, come deeper. You could even rest your forehead onto your block. A fist stack. Bolster if you're still higher. Or maybe you come all the way to the floor. And let's come back to brain breathing. Breathing in through both nostrils. Let the breath flood the brain. And let it pour down through your body as you breathe out. And out through your toes. Continue with brain breathing, breathing in through both nostrils. Feel like your exhale washes through that resistance, wherever it might be for you. And very slowly, start to walk your hands back to your knee and roll yourself up. Pause here. Settle really into the blanket. And either first option is right fingertips to the middle of the mat, left hand to your back thigh, kind of a bit more of an angle, left hand to your back thigh, or you bend the back knee and you draw the foot towards your buttocks and maybe you slide the toes into your elbow. If you really settle down into your pelvis, you might take the right hand up and take it over your head. And you can imagine, you could have a strap here, but imagine that you're allowing your hands to meet. And then slowly release. And then sit down onto your right side and draw your left leg out in front. Now let's come into Janu Shishasana. So allow the blanket now to be under both sides of your sit bones. Bring the right sole of the foot into the left thigh. You can have this knee bent and I like you to actually bend it to come into the pose. Lengthen through your spine and then exhale, come forward with the knee very generously bent. Find your edge. Now, if you don't have an edge from here, then you start to move your knee towards straight. And it might even be easier if you're not on your mat. So you can just slide your heel forward. So belly and thigh will be in contact in this version. And just like we were in Trikonasana, think about lengthening. So think about your sit bones moving back, lengthening through your waist. And maybe you nod and surrender. Or if that brings too much pressure into your lower back, then keep looking to your toes. So by having a generous bend in the knee, ideally you're feeling it in the muscle belly, not in the tendons. And then slowly begin to roll back up and plant your foot, your left foot on the mat. Bring your right foot forward to meet it. You can come into a reverse table. If you had a block, it's actually really good after those hip openers to then stabilize and squeeze in on the block. You can have your fingers pointing forward or roll your shoulders open and palms either a 45 or all the way back, fingers. 
pressing down through your hands and feet, coming up, really lifting the back of the body, opening the front of the body. If your chest lifts, then you can look up. Otherwise, keep looking past the block or your knees. And then slowly release. Take your block out. You're going to change your blanket. So now it's diagonally on the left side of the mat. Take yourself back into your downward dog. Feet together. Left leg up and long. Stay here. Bend the knee. Open through the hip. Just watch that the right leg, that the knee is still pointing forward. So you're not twisting through that right leg. So you might need to keep your heel up. Feel free if you want to play with wild things, particularly if you've got enough room. <laughs> and then come back over. Take that leg up and long. Open the hip. Then square the hip to the floor. Curl. Shin comes all the way over the blanket. Knee comes to the outside of the wrist. Tuck the back toes. Lift the back knee. Press out through the back hip. So your knee must be happy. So you keep pressing the outer ankle bone down into the floor. Heel comes quite close to your buttocks. If it's still not happy, please roll over and do threading the needle. Otherwise, you can start to come forward. Keep pressing the heel down or the outer ankle bone down. Don't rush, there's often lots of edges in pigeon. And you might notice that when we come to stillness and we hold a pose like a hip opener, it feels like your mind is all of a sudden active. But generally what it is, it's just that you've got more time and space to notice. So come back to brain breathing or alternate nostril breathing. And if that edge widens, sink a little deeper. And if your mind wanders off, bring it back time and time again. One more breath. If your mind wanders off, bring it back. Breathe in through both nostrils. Flood your brain. And let your breath go down through your body, your exhale. And all the way out through your toes. And then we'll slowly begin to come back up. Fingertips, right fingertips to the middle, sorry, left fingertips to the middle of the mat. Take your left hand around behind and you can either just stay here. So you're finding your edge and it can be really different on both sides of your body. So you might just touch your hand to your thigh and stay here. You might bend your knee and bring your heel in and maybe just touch the, hold the foot or slide the toes up towards your elbow. Maybe you lift this hand off the floor and take it behind. Play with where you need to be. You can massage the base of your skull. And you keep pressing your foot into your back hand and your hand into your foot. And then release. Sit down onto the left buttock and draw the right leg around in front. So generous bend in this knee. Sometimes it's better to not be on your mat, so just so you're not. And some people might find that they just need the block there the whole time. So start with the generous bend, come forward. Once you've got your left foot onto the 
inner aspect of that thigh, come forward over the thigh. Find your edge. Maybe you start to slide this knee towards straight, pop a prop underneath it, or just keep the heel pressing down, particularly those who get, um, so Margot, for you in particular, if you're getting any tension in the tendon of your hamstring, always keep your heel pressing down. And maybe you nod. Send your breath into your resistance. If you straighten your knee and you're just feeling it in the bottom of your sit bone or behind your knee, then put a prop underneath it. Get into the muscle belly to actually lengthen the muscle. And then we'll slowly roll up. Pause at the top, feeling the effects of pigeon and Janu Shishasana. And then you'll plant both feet. Take your blanket out actually, because you're going to roll onto your back when you're finished. And press down through the feet and hands coming up into your reverse table opening the front of the hips. Maybe you keep looking past your knee or if your chest lifts, you look to the ceiling. And then you'll slowly lower your buttocks to the floor. So we're gonna come into an inversion and in shavasana. So if you need to put another layer on before you lay down, please do. And come all the way down. If all you have is your block, you can place your block underneath your pelvis. And then take your legs up. Or you can put your crescent moon cushion or a bolster if you have it, or legs up the wall. Or if you want to make more dynamic, those who have been practice handstands, feel free. Or if you go, I've got no props. Then remember, you can always come into Viparita Karani. So I've got enough room. So where you roll, then bring your hands into your pelvis. Keep pressing your shoulders back. The weight is on your arms. So there's no pressure in your neck. You're pressing from your shoulders to your elbows down. Keep pressing the back of the head into the floor so that the throat is open. And when you're ready to come out of your inversion, you'll make your way to Shavasana. So make sure you're warm, make sure you're comfortable. And when you settle down, let's use Paramahansa Yogananda's double breath this morning. I love this practice of trying to find any little bits of tension that still remain after your practice. And so as you breathe in, it's that short and long inhale, tensing up your body. Like you're trying to search for any little bits of tension. So squeeze your shoulders, squeeze your hands, clench your teeth. And then as you breathe out through your mouth, let that go. Feel your fingers gently unravel, your toes soften. And do that twice more through the physical body.
And then start to take the double breath through the more subtle layers of your being, through your energetic body, just once. Through the thought body. Through your emotional body. Through the causal body. Allow your body to rest and sink into the mat and the surface underneath you. And bring your awareness to your internal sun. Feel, sense and imagine the internal sun shining bright like the beautiful sunrise. And every time you breathe in, you imagine your internal sun brighter, more radiant. And as you exhale, start to feel the sunlight moving through the whole of your abdomen, filling all of the internal organs, spreading into your diaphragm, your lower back, your pelvis. both buttocks, the fronts of your hips, your thighs, your knees and your kneecaps, your shins and your calves, ankles and heels, tops of the feet, soles of the feet, all ten toes, Feel, sense and imagine this radiant sunlight moving through your lungs. Two sections on the left lung, three sections on the right. Into your heart, thymus, all of the ribs, breastbone, collarbones, shoulders, armpits shoulder blades, the whole of your mid back. Feel this golden light spreading down through your arms to your elbows, lower arms, wrists, palms of the hands, backs of the hands, all 10 fingers. Feel this golden light of the sun spreading through your neck and pouring into the base of the skull, spreading to your brain, temples, forehead, both eyebrows, the space between the eyebrows. Right eye, left eye, nose, the right cheek and jaw, left cheek and jaw. Let the bottom jaw fall so the back teeth are open as you relax the lips, teeth, tongue. Feel, sense and imagine your whole being cocooned within the sunlight. Allow yourself to rest. Allow your practice to integrate. Allow the sun to rejuvenate the whole of your being.
And then very gently start to bring your awareness back to your body lying on the floor. And begin to draw your breath from the earth. Bring it to your navel, to your internal sun. And let it spread from here into every single cell in your body. And then collect your breath back from every cell to your navel and send it like an anchor or a root deep into the earth, grounding you. And keep breathing in this manner. And begin to move now in whatever way you feel guided. You might gently move your fingers and toes or you might take your arms over your head and stretch long, even pedaling out through the feet, lengthening the side waist. And then when you're ready, you'll gently roll to one side and pause there. Feeling the weight of the body grounding you a little more. And then gently come up onto or into a seated pose, cross-legged or Vajrasana. And let's come into alternate nostril breathing for just three rounds. So notice if your nostrils are open and clear. And if they are, bring your dominant hand up and place the index and the middle finger to touch the point between the eyebrows. If they're not, remember, do the practice without the hand. And then you close off the right nostril, breathing in through the left. Gently closing the left, opening the right, exhaling through the right. Inhaling right. Closing the right and exhaling left. Do two more times on your own. And as you complete, bring your hands to your heart space, breathing through both nostrils in and out. And let's seal this practice with three arms. Take a moment if you wish to dedicate this practice, this, these arms or this love. And we'll rub the palms together. Taking a breath in as you open your hands wide. Oh. It is with great respect and infinite love that we now conclude this practice on Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. I honor that place in you where light, love and truth dwell. For when you rest in that place in you and I dwell in that place in me, we are one. Namaste. Thank you all.